Where's part two? Where's part, where's part two, man? Dude, I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and you guys have been flooding the comments with requests for part two of the Intel CPU latency story. And today I'm very happy to be delivering the results. However, I do apologize, this took a long time to do because I had to test on a fresh install of Windows 10, then also a fresh install of Windows 11, but I also loaded up all the programs that I'd usually use on that OS, since also it is the preferred OS for 12th and 13th gen CPUs. And on top of that, I had to test at high frame rates on my camera over multiple different runs and then analyze all those frames, which took a very long time. So if anything, I would appreciate you hit that like button. And if you haven't already hit the sub button because this one is going to get juicy. But another thing is too, I wanna to get paid for my hard work. So I'm gonna quickly drop a sponsor spot right now. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So starting off with today's results, we are using the same cooler, we're using the same power supply, and we're using the same RTX 3090s. And then for the SSDs, we use two terabyte NVMe SSDs, Gen 4 on both systems, even though the i9-10850K only supports Gen 3. So there is one big difference here, and that is the memory used. We used for the i9-13900K, CL30 6000 megahertz DDR5, two by 32 gigabyte sticks. Then for the 10850K, we used two 32 gigabyte DDR4 sticks at 3200 megahertz CL16. Though now for the final explanation, today's video is not for someone looking for the highest FPS in games. This is a video that's completely unrelated to gaming FPS. I could not care about gaming FPS when I'm doing my work in Windows 10 or Windows 11. Gaming FPS is already extremely high on both these i9s at all resolutions, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. If you're looking for that, you need to go to a different video. What this video is for is for someone who's using this with a lot of actions per minute while they're doing work across different applications in either Windows 10 or Windows 11. Also, this is not the video for someone looking for AFK performance, i.e. running a Cinebench score. If we're looking at purely Cinebench scores, the 13900K is going to absolutely wipe the floor with the i9-10850K. There's just simply no comparison here. It has more cores and it has more instructions per cycle that it can deliver for these applications. So let's get onto these results here, starting off with the fresh install of Windows 10. And here is where we had 120 FPS filming, searching Windows 10 for different music files. And here's where I'll say that Windows 10 is a lot more responsive in terms of its search bar in the OS itself, regardless of the CPU. And here's where we saw no difference on our camera at these particular settings across 10 different runs. Though when we stepped it up to opening music files on this fresh install across 10 different files, this is where we gained a certain insight that was very valuable. And that was the first time we opened a music file on the 13900K, it was visibly slower than the first time we opened it on the 10850K. However, after that, the 10850K started to remain roughly at the same speed, but the 13900K started to pull ahead on the subsequent runs after that, which means that there is some sort of advanced prediction going on with the 13900K, and it has that advantage over the 10850K. So applying this advantage to work scenarios, especially if you're opening new files or dragging and dropping multiple different things, it seems like a benefit that cannot be utilized for someone doing average desktop work. So the next test we are going to throw up here is the visible latency mouse movement to cursor reaction. In other words, total system input latency. And here is where we did 10 different runs across both these CPUs. And this is where the 10850K did score a slight advantage, though it was really nothing to write home about. We tested this with the Evnia 34 inch ultra wide, which has extremely low input lag to begin with, as you see with these numbers and it also runs at 175 hertz. So there will be some variance in these numbers, but I'm definitely happy with what I'm seeing on both CPUs. One or two milliseconds is not going to bother anyone when they're doing their work. 
Though the last test that we're going with Windows 10 here is actually going to tie in to the Windows 11 test. And it was one of the most interesting because it was one that you guys requested in the last video, one that I wanted to check out more in depth. And that was the Latency Mon program, which checks for DPC latency. And here's where I just decided to record the worst score across the different variables. And this came from the driver interaction from the graphics card with the CPU on both instances across Windows 11, which we'll get onto soon. But here's where with Windows 10, and there was a significant difference, though this is in nanoseconds. Keep that in mind. No one is going to be able to notice these differences in real time, but there is something interesting here, and that is if the problem does compound, it can cause glitching. And here's where we did see, if we're just looking at the bar graph itself, a significant difference after one minute on an idle desktop between the 10850K and the 13900K. It was 166 nanoseconds versus 419 worst case scenario. And here's where we're gonna segue now into Windows 11 where the 10850K is still performing roughly the same at 167 nanoseconds. However, the 13900K gets a significant drop here down to 300 nanoseconds. So analyzing this result before we jump into the other results means that Windows 11 does indeed work better with the 13th and 12th gen CPUs. But that's because Microsoft has specifically designed their thread director for the new 12th and 13th gen CPUs with Windows 11. Which is also another reason why we did these upcoming tests here on Windows 11 is the Windows 11 search, which as you can see versus the Windows 10, it's significantly slower when searching for a music file, which I don't know why Microsoft just don't have the option to make this start menu search just like it was on Windows 10. It's a really annoying issue here. But anyway, here we did see a actual noticeable difference between the i9-10850K and the 13900K. And my internet connection here is a one gigabit per second connection. It has very low latency to begin with, if you are wondering. So the next test that we're gonna throw up here is the final render test for Premiere Pro, because what we're going into after this test is quite negative for the 13900K. And here's where the numbers aren't actually too different. I was really surprised to see that Adobe Premiere Pro has been updated to utilize much more of the onboard UHD graphics from Intel as well as the GPU itself, the RTX 3090. So the CPU cores actually remain pretty low now and they're not as much as a priority, especially for a final render, at least as opposed to what they used to be even just a few months ago. However, while I've got this loaded program up, here is where the biggest issues come up for me personally, even after reinstalling Windows 11. And this has to do with dragging and dropping files into Adobe Premiere Pro while I've either got a loaded video up or if I'm opening files to check different music that I want to use for a video. And here's where we'll start off with opening the music file. And you can see here, we're opening 10 music files in rapid succession, just like we did on Windows 10. But this time around with everything loaded up in Windows 11, even on a reinstall, this is where the i9-13900K, sure enough, poops the bed just like it does on the next test where in this case, opening all the 10 files is a pass. And here is where on the final test, the i9-13900K dragging and dropping certain video files into Premiere Pro on a finished project render here, which is also again, a very strenuous load for everything in the system. It was showing that the i9-13900K would bug out and essentially just like opening files, sometimes it would poop the bed. So with those results out of the way, I'm gonna say one thing. I did not wanna make this video. Logically, right, if you're a PC enthusiast, it doesn't make any sense that an older product would be performing better in certain metrics than newer products. In this case, the i9-10850K and also the 10900K, they're going to do certain things better than the latest and greatest i9-12900K and 13900K. And these differences only come out on a completely loaded system when you're in the middle of heavy work. On a fresh install of Windows 10 or Windows 11, and if you've just got a few games open, maybe Spotify, and you're just doing some things, you are not going to notice these differences at all. And as we saw the rapid opening of the music files overall is doing what it technically should be doing. And that's beating the i9-10850K in all aspects. However, it doesn't beat the i9-10th gen in all aspects. And one of those 
being initial latency registers, which I believe has something to do, as we said in part one, with the IO driver being moved directly off the CPU. That's all I was told at Computex. The people with this knowledge would not go any deeper for me, but they just wanted to reassure me that it wasn't in my head. And I'm very thankful for that because over the years when I test these products, especially when I start getting into the deep end with them, loading them up heavily in video editing files and things like that, I start to find these intricacies that just aren't talked about in mainstream reviews. Now, why hasn't this come out anywhere else on the internet? Why are no other reviewers talking about this? Why is this not coming out? Why are you the only person, Brian, talking about this? Well, the only reason I even got into this for starters, and first of all, I'm going to defend every other reviewer out there and say that they're doing the right thing. They're testing these CPUs on fresh installs of Windows and Linux, if they're doing that, the way it should be done. They're giving people an objective measurement on all the metrics related to a CPU and how it should perform in games and certain applications. These tests I'm doing here today are very niche and they're only gonna come out after you've used the CPU for quite a while, and in this case, only when it's heavily loaded up. And so over the years, when I started using the 12900K, I didn't really notice much, but I did change things around. I first of all thought my system was having delays because I only had 32 gigabytes of memory in there. And then I waited to get a DDR5 64 gigabyte kit of memory on the i9-12900K, change back to that. But all in that time, I actually had a lot going on personally where I had to uh, move over to Japan. And then since I've been in Japan, I've had a lot going on here too. And it's only recently that I've really been getting settled in to a schedule and I've noticed these things. I'm like, hey, I remember I used to use that i9-10900K and it was a lightning bolt in everything. I didn't have any issues. So then I'm coming into these issues and I'm like, why is this happening? So that's the biggest reason for me personally for looking into this more. But then as we said before, when I went to Computex, I got reassured by people with the know-how on this CPU architecture that it's actually a CPU design issue, or you could say it's a benefit because as we saw with those Cinebench scores, they're scoring a lot better there. The CPU is doing a lot better in other metrics, but in this particular metric, it's not doing as well. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, this video, I hope you enjoyed it. It's only going to be for a real small niche market of people, but at the same time, I feel like it's very justified if you're buying a flagship i9 desktop consumer grade CPU. That's what these things were always designed for. They were designed for the hardcore single end user to be the best at everything. And I feel like the i9-12900K and also the 13900K are simply not the best at everything. And this is where I'm starting to branch away and go back to 10th gen. And I'm definitely going to be using this more and enjoying it like I used to with no issues popping up. At worst, what I could find was when I was dragging and dropping on this loaded Windows 11 was some slight hitching, but that didn't interrupt my workflow, which is what I was getting on the i9-13900K. And it could definitely come down to that DPC latency, and that could be an NVIDIA driver issue too. But if we're changing the, just the CPU and we're using that Windows 11 loaded drive, fresh install on the 13900K, and then just grabbing that drive and putting it on the 10850K, and actually that's in pure testing terms, that's a detriment to the 10850K, and it's working a lot better, then that, I believe, may not be a driver problem, it may be a CPU problem. Though, the final questions that I know are gonna come in, and I'm gonna address them before they're even coming in, is why is this going on? What is happening here? And to answer that, I'm not a CPU architect. I don't really know much about the inner workings of these CPUs. I just test them and especially use them thoroughly. And when I notice differences, I'm gonna to get to the bottom of those differences. Testing is what I know how to do and hopefully you guys enjoyed the results. Though in terms of getting further clarification on this, I cannot find any reviewer out there that talks about this specific architecture on 12th and 13th gen and the changes made at the core level. Maybe Ian Cutris may know more about this. Dr. Ian Cutris at Tech Tech Potato, I'd like to talk to him more in depth. He might know more about this, but in the meantime, I just simply don't really know. And to be honest, I just simply don't wanna go down this rabbit hole because I know where it goes. You'll end up at the same spot that you were left in in the first place, and that's still scratching your head as to the why. 
Also, big thanks to you guys behind the scenes for sending me in your issues that you were having with 12th and 13th gen systems. A big one that I was getting was people using Microsoft Office applications coming into either stuttering, massive stuttering, hitching, or even flat out uh, issues where the system would hang, which is what I actually experienced, like I said in part one, with Microsoft Word. So big thanks to you guys for reaching out behind the scenes there. I honestly didn't need to do any more testing there because I've already got the answers from the testing I've done here, which is satisfactory for me to be going back to 10th gen for editing videos with Premiere Pro heavily in Windows 11 and or 10. Though with all that aside, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. We're actually gonna have a part three to this video because there was just so much information in today's video that I've also gotta talk about something else that I heard at Computex in relation to Intel and AMD. It's a big story. So we're actually gonna make this a three part series now, but this one was probably the one that you are definitely excited to see. And with that aside, we've also got the question of the day here, which comes from Hiroi Tapa. And they asked, what about 11th gen Intel? Just as snappy as 10th gen, we bought a 11700KF for a good price end of 2022. Rather than going with 12th gen 12400F, wise decision, Z590 Gaming Plus mainboard was also quite cheap. So in terms of the 11th gen CPUs, I only really got one in for benchmarking, vaguely tested it, and then I moved on. Uh, now in Japan, I don't have access to the CPU, but what I can do if you guys really enjoyed this kind of testing and videos, I can get an 11th gen in, run it through the same suite of benchmarks here, as well as go with AMD's Ryzen, the eight core and the 16 core on 7000 series, just to get a bit of an update there going forward on how everything's functioning in these different types of metrics. So to give you guys the raw details on 11th gen, they did change the architecture. I know that whether it's still a true ring bus or not, I'm not certain. I didn't have time at Computex to get those answers. I was really concerned about the CPU that I've used in the past and never had any issues with, and that was the i9-10900K, the 10850K, which is virtually the same thing as the 10900K. Anyhow, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.